unity, cooperation, self-sacrifice, devotion. These may be regarded as exemplary qualities in all societies. Every human being would hope to live among individuals who possess these virtues. The film you are about to watch deals with just these examples of proper morality. Yet the heroes in it are not human beings at all. The Middle East. It is not easy to survive in this hot, barren land. These tiny creatures known as Arab birds manage, however, to survive in these difficult conditions. Because they display amazing solidarity and cooperation among themselves, they do everything together, even bathing. After washing comes sunbathing. As they dry their feathers, they clean each other. This is very important for their health. They look after one another, never getting tired or fed up. Work is divided between them. Finding food for their young, for instance, is a job they do communally. All the food they find is later shared out equally. The defense of the flock is also shared out equally. Every bird takes its turn to stand guard in a treetop. When the time comes for the changing of the guard, the new sentry brings a quantity of food to the bird he is to replace and then takes over. This duty is of vital importance to the group safety. A viper. The sentry bird immediately sounds the alarm. The flock comes together for protection. The birds also try to disturb the snake and distract it. Young birds display their strength and courage by challenging the snake and try to earn respect within the flock. As the danger recedes, life returns to normal. A sentry assumes his post. The chicks begin to play amongst themselves. So how was it that these birds came to display such powerful cooperation? Let us think and continue to ask questions. The animals you are watching possess no consciousness. 
Why should an animal stand guard over its friends? One would expect it to fly off and look for something to eat. But what it actually does is a great sacrifice. It stands guard like a soldier, seriously and determinedly, eating nothing. Who taught these creatures about altruism? Who tells them to endanger their own lives for the sake of their friends? There can be no question that it is the Almighty God, the Creator, who instill these feelings of unity, cooperation, and sacrifice into these tiny birds. As we are told in Surah 16 in the Quran, God inspires the requisite behavior in animals to keep them alive. Feelings of sacrifice and cooperation among birds are very powerful. The solidarity and mutual assistance displayed by fieldfares are another miracle of creation. These birds live in flocks of 30 to 40 members. Unity and togetherness are always very powerful within the group. They raise their young together with the greatest care. The strongest example of solidarity within the group comes when there is a danger to the young. Here is that danger, a young raven. Its target is the chicks. One of the watchers sees the raven and warns the others. The group takes their stations and the defense force comes together. One of the birds squawks angrily and threatens the intruder. The threat is then translated into action. They attack the intruder en masse. Stunned by the counter-attack, the raven withdraws. But the fighters move in with all their might and bring the enemy down. The raven survives the attack with great difficulty. Communication, mutual assistance and unity have saved the lives of their chicks. One of the distinguishing characteristics of the elephant, the largest land mammal on earth, is its devotion to its fellows. Sacrifice and mutual assistance are not limited to family members, but can be seen within the entire herd. A hot summer day on the African plains. Elephants are constantly on the move to find food and water. This nearly dry lake is the only source of water around. Many other animals from wild oxen to buffalo share this water with them.
This baby elephant is finding it difficult to drink as his trunk is still very short. He has to bend down a long way to reach the water. One of the adult elephants bumps into it by accident, knocking it into the water. Unless the baby can escape at once, it will sink into the mud and die. There is no time to lose. The mother elephant kneels down and leans over the edge. She places her trunk under the baby and tries to pull it out. The other elephants reach the scene and join her, and they all try to pull the baby out. And a patient rescue operation begins. The sides are very steep. Some elephants, therefore, try to make a ramp to reach the baby by digging away at the edge. Others chase the buffaloes away from the scene. Because if a herd comes to drink near where the baby is caught, that will impede the rescue operation. Eventually, teamwork saves the day. The baby elephant is saved. Every elephant in the herd goes up to the baby and sniffs it with its trunk. This is a sign of affection among elephants. The devotion and mutual assistance within the herd has saved the baby's life. This astonishing devotion in living things is one of the miracles of God's creation. In one verse of the Quran, God informs us, there is no creature God does not hold by the forelock. Every one of these large earthen towers is homes to creatures known as termites, which are similar to ants. Termites live in colonies made up of millions of individuals. They work together so harmoniously that the whole colony functions like a single body, a single creature. These are worker termites. They are blind and deaf. As you can see, they mix pieces of earth with a special plaster and widen the walls of their nest. God has given these creatures, which behave like the cells of a single body, different bodily structures for different jobs. Workers are born with the necessary tools for construction on their bodies. As you are now seeing, soldier termites are equipped with heavy weapons. Termites grow fungi in underground storerooms down in the depths of their nests. However, one side product of this is carbon dioxide. Unless the carbon dioxide can be eliminated from the nest, the termites will suffocate and die. Nothing of the sort happens, however, thanks to this construction technique instilled in them by God. Tall chimneys that stretch up into the wind currents pull the stale air in the nest upwards and function as the colony's lungs.
Everything built by termites is a marvel of architecture and engineering. Let us now go back a little and consider what we have just been saying. The termite is a tiny insect. It possesses neither reason nor consciousness. It is also blind and deaf. So how does this insect come by the knowledge to create a whole building? How does it know what its job is from among thousands of other termites? What you are seeing on the screen is a construction project. The project contains all the details of all the jobs to be done during the construction work. Who will do what job, how and when are all set out. An architect possessing reason and consciousness has drawn this project up and an engineer with reason and consciousness has performed the necessary calculations. Master craftsmen Workers and plumbers work according to the blueprint. They all study the blueprint and construction proceeds according to plan. At this point, let us carefully consider. The termites have no drawings in their hands. They cannot receive any training. They are not managed by a visible administrator. How is it then that thousands of termites can produce a building with such an incomparable design, all working together at the same time? Let us for a moment imagine people with no eyes or ears. Let us also imagine that these people had never had any training. Then, let thousands of these people start constructing a building at the same time, with no orders given to them and no descriptions of what they have to do. Furthermore, let us imagine that the building they create contains an incomparable plan and design. Such cooperation can only be accounted for by a will that controls all these people in a miraculous manner. The same thing applies to the termite. The way these deaf and blind insects operate as a single entity and eventually create flawless buildings demonstrates one clear truth. Termites are created by God and it is He who inspires in them the tasks they perform. God reveals in one verse of the Quran that All praise belongs to God, the Lord of the heavens and the Lord of the earth, Lord of all the worlds. All greatness belongs to Him in the heavens and earth. He is the Almighty, the All-Wise. These delightful animals, known as meerkats, live together in groups. And there is amazing solidarity between them. Solidarity is of vital importance because the region they live in is a very dangerous one. The worst danger of all comes from the sky. The eagle does not see them for the moment. After carrying out security checks, the meerkats disperse over the field to look for food.
Every individual in this group has a different job. Some meerkats stand guard to protect the others. The meerkat you are watching is standing guard against any danger that might emerge from behind the bushes. Others endanger their own safety by standing guard in the treetops. They wait under the blazing sun, eating and drinking nothing. This time the eagle sees them. The sentry sounds the alarm to the others. Cooperation and solidarity save the meerkats' lives. The group's most important duty is protecting and raising the young. Every day a meerkat stays by the nest and watches over the young. Just like sentry duty, they take it in turns every day to look after the young. Meerkats do not hesitate to sacrifice their own lives for the young in the group at moments of danger. Here is an example. Meerkats have left the nest to look for food on a hot summer day, and danger is waiting for them on their return. A jackal is lying in ambush near the nest where the babies are. One of the meerkats approaches the nest to save the young. Its aim is to stop the jackal entering the nest. As night falls, the meerkat is still using itself as a shield at the entrance to the nest. As day breaks, traces of a fierce fight in the hours of darkness can be seen. The jackal has been chased away from the nest, and the young have been saved. However, the brave young meerkat has sacrificed itself and is badly injured. Its mother comes to the wounded meerkat's side. Its condition is critical. The meerkats need to move off if they are to find food. The injured meerkat is having great difficulty walking, however. When its strength finally gives out, it lies down in a ditch. The other meerkats do not leave their wounded friend alone. In a demonstration of farewell and loyalty, they stay by its side until it breathes its last. All this surprising cooperation, solidarity and devotion among meerkats is behavior inspired in them by God.
the banks of the River Nile. These waters and banks are very dangerous. Many dangers have to be faced in order to raise young here. The species of bird you are watching has to build its nest on banks that are full of crocodiles. It moves very slowly and tries to avoid attracting the crocodile's attention. It particularly chooses areas where female crocodiles have left their eggs to build its nest. That is because female crocodiles are very calm and docile during egg-laying time and do not represent a danger to the birds. In time, the birds' eggs begin to hatch and tiny chicks emerge. Yet these chicks are in danger. As you can see, both the mother and father bird fiercely use their own bodies to shield their young and defy the dangerous lizard. The lizard might kill the bird, but the bird is ready to die in order to save its chicks. The lizard gives up in the face of the bird's determination and courage. Things change when a hungry and aggressive male crocodile approaches the nest. The chicks freeze. The mother bird puts on a different display this time. She opens her wings and beats them on the ground. She does not directly oppose the aggressor. On the contrary, she imitates an injured bird and invites the aggressor to attack her. She thus attracts the danger away from the nest. The deception works. The crocodile follows the supposedly injured bird and moves away from the nest. Its attention is then drawn by a lizard and it moves away entirely. Thanks to the feeling of self-sacrifice inspired in them by God, the mother and father birds risk their lives to protect their young. In buffalo herds, newborn calves are looked after not just by their parents, but by the whole herd. And they face all kinds of risks to defend them, even lions. When lions approach, the entire herd sounds the alarm. As you can see, they form a defense ring around the calves. They use their own bodies as shields to protect the calves from the lions. There are only two calves in this herd. Yet, not just their parents, but the whole herd risk their lives to protect them. These buffaloes could just think of running away and saving themselves. In that way, the lions would go for the calves who are left behind rather than the sharp-horned adults. In such a case, as claimed by Darwin's theory of evolution, the weak would be weeded out and eliminated while the selfish strong survived. But that is not what happens. The buffaloes do not abandon the helpless calves. Thanks to the feelings of self-sacrifice instilled in them by God, they protect the calves even at the cost of their own lives. Buffalo herds protect not just the young, 
but also the elderly. The images you are about to see were taken by a tourist on safari in Kenya. A group of lions ambush an elderly buffalo that has moved away from the herd. It looks like death will be the inevitable result. But a miraculous event takes place. The elderly buffalo's cries for help reach the distant herd. They at once head for the scene. Then courageous buffaloes approach the lions in a threatening manner in order to rescue their companion. And the lions flee. The buffalo gather around the injured animal and try to raise it to its feet. Minutes pass. Things look hopeless for the exhausted buffalo. The lions are still waiting in ambush. Believing it to have died, the last few remaining buffalo begin to move away. And yet, another miraculous event takes place. The injured buffalo cries out one more time, as if asking them not to leave it. The herd immediately come back. The buffaloes once more see off the approaching lions. With a final effort, the elderly buffalo rises to its feet and mingling with its rescuers is lost from sight. These are Australian parrot chicks. They came into the world five days apart from one another. So there are considerable differences between them. The first chick to hatch is much larger than the last. Yet the mother parrot treats them all fairly. Every chick is given as much food as it needs. Ten days later, the oldest chick is still much larger than the others. Yet it miraculously shares its food with the smallest and weakest sibling, feeding it with its own beak. Why does that tiny chick make such a sacrifice? Why does it give its own food to its helpless sibling? Believers in Darwin's theory of evolution can never answer that question. Because that outdated theory rests on the assumption that everything in nature is selfish and engaged in a ruthless fight for survival. Yet, as we have seen, even a tiny chick shares its food with its weaker and helpless siblings when necessary. 
All the chicks grow up to be strong and healthy, thanks to the feelings of sharing and solidarity inspired in them by God. The woodpecker's beak is a magnificent drill. It first bores a hole in the tree with its beak and then puts an acorn in the hole for retrieval later in the winter. This tree contains some 60,000 acorns stored in it by woodpeckers. It is no easy job to make 60,000 holes in tree bark. Woodpeckers manage it, however, with great patience and devotion, and then fill the holes with acorns. Their aim is to be able to feed their families through the harsh days of winter. Young members of the family assist in these preparations. Every bird carries out its duty to the letter. Not one neglects to do so. In a demonstration of perfect cooperation and solidarity, the woodpecker family prepares for the hard days to come. Another characteristic of living things that totally invalidates the theory of evolution is the surprising love and affection that can be seen in their behavior. The theory of evolution rests on the assumption that all living things are selfish and engaged in a ruthless fight for survival, whereas the fact is that their behavior reveals the exact opposite. This splendidly colored crested bird, for instance, clearly thinks very carefully about how to content its mate. It gives her little presents, a piece of fruit, for instance. Birds all over the world treat their mates in the same attentive manner. The guan bird in the Amazon jungle behaves in just the same way, as does the European goldfinch. Seabirds like fish, of course, so that represents the best possible gift for them. Grebes also like fish, but for the grebe, an exchange of gifts is only the beginning. Couples decide whether they are suited by dancing. At the start of the dance, they imitate each other's movements. Having got to know one another, they move on to the second phase of the dance in astonishing harmony. This dance shows the neighborhood that a new family has been born.
presents are given once the dance is over. The male seagull also gives his mate presents. After building their nest, the male and female begin caring for each other in the most attentive manner. Albatrosses behave in just the same way. These great beaks are very sharp and a danger to other birds. Yet, these sharp beaks also allow them to care for each other with great affection and devotion. The theory of evolution that regards living things as selfish and ruthless entities that emerged by chance is unable to account for this affection and harmony. That is because God created living things. And it is God who gives them feelings of affection, self-sacrifice and sharing that the theory of evolution can never account for. In one verse of the Quran, God reveals that everyone in the heavens and earth belongs to Him. All are submissive to Him.